Hey y'all, Kentucky Farmer here, and welcome back to the 21st episode in my FS17 course play tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to do something a little bit different. This is going to be a combination course play and follow me tutorial. So this is kind of something that we do a lot on the multiplayer server. Obviously, we can't use course play because that doesn't work in multiplayer, but we can do this with follow me. And so I kind of wanted to show how we do this and kind of explain why I'm using both course play and follow me to do this. So I've got, uh, let's see here, seven tractors with six loading wagons and two rakes. Uh, in the front here we've got this tractor with a normal wind rower and then we've got a bunch of those loading wagons and then back here on the last tractor we've got a uh, Nadell R90 which is just a front mounted wind rower and um, we use this technique because you can basically put all these in follow me drive them down to a field have them do all the field work to collect all the straw windrow and then drive them all back and I'm not too sure because I haven't done this field before but I should have enough storage capacity in all of these loading wagons to collect all the straw and so the reason why I've got two rakes one at the front one at the back uh, we are on Cherry Hills map and so there's a bit of a glitch with the 4x map where the windrow doesn't necessarily fall correct from the harvester I believe and so if you use one of these rakes and set this tractor up to follow the uh, course play course that we used to run the harvester in the last episode then this will help uh, kind of neaten up the windrow so that it's easier for all the following tractors to pick it up uh, the other thing is, when the harvester leaves its windrow, the harvester itself is driving the GPS course and discharging the windrow out the back. But when a loading wagon comes through, the tractor's following the course, not the loading wagon. The loading wagon is being trailed behind the tractor. And so what can happen in this scenario is, uh, oftentimes the loading wagon drifts to the inside of the turns and we'll miss the windrow that's on the outside. So if we start off by raking the course with a rake, then the rake will also drift to the inside of the turns, moving the windrow over so that it's in line with the rest of the loading wagons. Now we've got this rake in the back here, this Nadel, uh, because if any of these loading wagons in the row are, were to miss a part of the windrow, then this one can kind of help catch it. It'll push it back towards the middle and then it gives you one last chance to pick it up. And the reason why we put this on the last tractor is because as we're going, this one will fill up first. And once this one's full, then this one will keep, start to fill up. And then this one, and then this one, and then this one. So this is the last loading wagon to fill. And so we want to be windrowing before this one because this is a, kind of our last chance to catch some of those parts that we're gonna miss. If we put it on you know, this tractor, then once it's full, then it kind of defeats the purpose. So you know, maybe one of the ones behind it will get it, maybe not, you don't really know. So we're gonna have all these tractors in the back following this tractor and then this tractor will actually be running course play. Uh, we could do a uh, unload course and set one of these tractors out to come pick up this windrow and unload it back at the barn but this is just an example of something you can do if you've got the resources to do it. Obviously this much hardware costs a lot of money right and you're not interested in recording a bunch of unload courses to do something like this. This is nice because you can just drive out to the field, do the work, and drive it all back. And you don't have to worry about recording a course to do it. And, uh, you know, you kind of have to do these with follow me and not with course play because if you used course play with a loading wagon, as soon as the loading wagon was full, it would stop. 
So, you know, if you were to set all these out on the same course, this one would stop as soon as it was full, and then it would block the rest of these. With follow me, when this is full, it just lifts the pickup, and then it's going to keep driving. So, I mean, it's also not necessarily ideal, strictly speaking, because you're putting hours on a lot of equipment, and you're burning gas in a lot of tractors. So, you know, this, this technique isn't for everyone. Okay, so to get started, uh, we need to turn on our tractor here and we're going to open up course play. And we're going to set up a field work course. Go over here to course generation, select field one. And we need to set this down to 13 meters because our combine detects at 13 too, but I always set it at 13. Now we're going to start at the southeast corner, and we're going to head west, and then we need to do two headlands, because remember in the last video we did two headlands, we did clockwise, and then the back and forth fieldwork portion, and we'll generate that course, I'll we'll preview it just to make sure it looks right, yeah it looks like what we did last time, looks good. And now that we've got that in there, I can go ahead and... I need to unfold my rake and I need to lower and start the pickups on all these loading wagons. And on this one, I also need to unfold the front rake. get that started. Okay, looks like everyone's ready to go. Lower that and turn it on. And now we're just going to kind of drive forward here, being careful so that we miss the telephone poles. Yeah, we'll just kind of get started down this row here. There we go. And then I'm just going to say nearest waypoint, drive course. And the one last thing I want to check, I need to actually dial this down to 12 miles an hour because the, uh, the Nadell rake on the last tractor uh, maxes out at 12 miles an hour. And so we need to make sure that we don't head or move so fast that we wind up leaving it behind uh, because follow me will only work from you know so far back before it will lose the vehicle it's trying to follow and give up all right so this seems to be running the course pretty good here I can uh, hop back into one of the tractors a little further back in the row. Alright, and these are all starting to move a little bit here. With this many tractors, sometimes it takes follow me a little bit to get moving. Uh, one last setting I forgot about that we need to do here on our course play tractor. We want to deactivate turn on field. Uh, turn on field would cause this. Oh, follower J stopped too far behind. I can fix that. We can go a little faster if I pick this up so I can catch back up with them. So 
So again, this last one had a hard time catching back up because the rake on the front limits how fast it can go. So uh, I probably should have started off the lead tractor a little bit slower, like had it start off at, uh, you know, 8 miles an hour until everything was caught up and moving and then dialed the speed up on it a little bit. Alright, here's a kind of a prime example of why we have the rake on the front. As you can see, uh, when w the previous loading wagons all went down this road, it missed a fair bit here. So that's the nice thing about this rake is, you know, we can be over here and still get, you know, <laughs> it misses a little bit when you do a turn, but, you know, I can be over here and still get a fair bit of it. Alright, we're finally getting caught back up here. So I can put this back and follow me. Alright, so what I was saying earlier about the uh, the lead vehicle, you need to deactivate turn on field because what that will do is uh, it will cause the lead vehicle to back up when it gets to the end of the down and back rows and then make the turn and then back up and then start the row. and that does not work very well with follow me. Uh, it will cause issues because the follow me drivers are not a big fan of having to back up. So as you can see from glance there, our first vehicle is full and we've got 19% full in the second one and this one's 1% 1 full and you know there's a little bit in two of the other ones so uh, you can see how having the rake on the back one does actually help you uh, pick up some of what gets missed by the rest of the train. Alright, so there you have it. That is a <laughs> unique way to collect straw off of a field. Uh, this also goes for um, uh, picking up grass windrow off of a field or uh, you know, one thing that we do sometimes too is, you know, you can either hire a worker, use the um, AI vehicle extension, or if you're in single player, use course play, and then have the loading wagons actually follow right behind the harvester when you're uh, doing the initial harvest on the field. That works out well too. So it's a this is a little bit of an overkill method. I totally recognize that and our uh, crone loading wagons are, are very OP in that they hold uh, 200,000 liters each but um, that's besides the point. <laughs> so uh, hopefully you found this video interesting. You know I figured it's a unique method someone might appreciate it so uh, if you got any questions or comments feel free to leave them below. If you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up that helps a lot. If you're new to my channel and new to course play, I'll put a link in the video description below to my course play tutorial playlist. Be sure to check that out. I've got lots of videos on how to use course play. And be sure to subscribe for updates on new videos when they come out. I'm Kentucky Farmer. Thanks for watching.